everyone, welcome to my channel, Notes on the Sewing Room. My name's Becky, thanks for joining me today. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year wherever you are in the world. Today's video is all about what I was making during December. So I've made a few things for myself and I've also made um, something for my little boy and also a few gifts as well. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you what I've been sewing up over the last month or so. So stay tuned and you'll find out what I've been up to. So I thought I'd start today's video by sharing uh, what I'm wearing today and that's also my first make as well. So it's in this lovely cotton jersey fabric, uh, which I bought from by Grizzilla Fabrics a little while ago. So as you can see, it's got this lovely um, striped print and it's also got a heart design on there. If I just come a little bit closer to the camera, you'll be able to see it a little bit more uh, closely. So I really like this fabric. As soon as I saw it, it just kind of popped out to me uh, when I saw it sitting there on the internet. So I just had to pick um, myself up a little bit. So I think I bought about a metre and a half of it. I'm not sure, um, I didn't measure it when I was uh, using it, but um, I did buy it a little while ago, so I can't remember, but I think it was about a metre and a half that I actually bought. Um, and originally I was gonna sew it into one of my favourite um, tops, which is the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons. But um, I actually just completely changed my mind, <laughs> and uh, as you do, and decided to make something different, which was actually on my make nine list from um, 2021. So I thought I'd squeeze this in at the last minute. Um, sorry, my, uh, my Labrador bent is just moving the camera around. Sorry about that. Um, so I decided to actually sew myself up a Alice top. That's it just there. So that's the Alice top. So as you can see, it's supposed to be a jumper type thing, more of a sweatshirt design. It's supposed to have quite a lot of ease in there. But I decided that, do you know what? I've got a few jumpers and I just wanted more of a top that I could actually just layer up, you know, under a jumper or a cardigan. So I decided instead of using a sweatshirt type fabric as it's designed for, I thought I would go for more of a lightweight jersey instead. So as I said, this is the cotton jersey that I decided to use. So I have made a few alterations to this because I didn't want all the ease that was in there because I wanted to wear it as more of a top, um, as I said, rather than a sweatshirt. So what I decided to do is I missed off the facing for a start. So that was supposed to sit around the neckline. Um, as you'll see, we've got a kind of boat type neckline on there. It's quite wide, to be honest. I did have to do a little alteration on the shoulders there just to kind of bring it up a little bit more because I did find that it was almost kind of falling off my shoulders and it was a little bit annoying. Um, but I think possibly that's because I've not used a stable fabric like it was supposed to be for and also I guess I've not put the facing on and I've actually turned, I've overlocked this and then I've turned it under twice and just top stitched it. But I'm just going to show you the back detailing because I love the back. So I'm not sure if you can see it there. So it's kind of a, a V-neck type back. So I will put in some pictures of me actually wearing the top so you get a little bit more of an idea of what it was supposed to uh, be like or what, what it is like, sorry. Um, and also it was supposed to have cuffs on there but I've actually missed those off. And again, I've just top stitched around the arms but I quite like this uh, length. So it's come up actually, it's not really three quarter length arms, it's probably just a little bit longer than that. But I quite like um, the length of the sleeves, I must say. Um, in terms of the length, I missed off the hem band so instead I actually added on three inches to the hem. And to be honest, it's still quite short, um, but that's fine because I tend to wear high-waisted skirts. So it's actually tucked in quite nicely to the top of my skirt. Um, so I think it's worked out really nicely. I did end up taking, I've made this in a size small and I have taken quite a lot out of the side seams as well. Um, possibly about four centimeters on each side, so quite a lot. Um, to try and make it the size that it actually is now. If I just hold up my iPad again, you'll be able to see uh, what it's supposed to be like in the actual original design. So as you can see, you've got the cuffs on there, you've got the hem band, and it's supposed to have the facing just around the neckline. But it is a fairly simple pattern to make, to be honest. Um, this is probably the second time I've used a fiber mood pattern. I do find the patterns a little bit confusing um, to actually cut out and everything. Um, that's basically because in the version that I used, I think, there's, I think there's a difference between if you have the magazine version or if you just buy the patterns as a PDF from the Fiber Mood website. I bought mine as a PDF. So in the designs that I've got, in the pattern pieces that I've got, I had the actual size and then another cutting line, which is actually including the seam allowance. But I believe 
maybe in the magazine version you have to add on the seam allowance i'm not sure but i think there is a little bit of information over on the fiber mood web website if you are interested and you want to find out a little bit more um, but i did find that there was lots and lots of lines on the page of the um the pattern piece and so you have to be a little bit careful about where you actually cut so i actually just used a colored pencil and actually marked out where i needed to cut and then that's what i did so it worked out quite well i guess if i was to make this top again because of the amount of ease that was included in it i might size down a little bit but again it, perhaps if i did use a sweat fabric instead a sweater type fabric maybe I'd be fine with the extra ease because the fabric could have less movement in it and that kind of thing. So that was make number one that I wanted to share with you today. Make number two that I wanted to share with you today is actually another t-shirt that I've been working on and this is a t-shirt that I have wanted to make for absolutely ages and for whatever reason I've not got around to it. Uh, you know how it goes, life gets in the way but I'm really pleased to say that I have actually had a chance to make it now and this is actually the iris t-shirt. I'm just going to hold up my iPad there so you can see it a little bit better. Um, there's lots of pictures uh, here on the uh, internet that you can see the sleeve detail etc um, and it's a really really nice top. So this is actually again made in a cotton jersey. So I was actually given this cotton jersey a little while ago to be honest um, by Eliza Mac Fabrics and um, I I found the other day that the fabric is still on the website if you are interested um, but it's a really lovely fabric here sorry it's a little bit creased um, it's got this lovely splodge detail on there and I really like it it's it's a medium weight I would say cotton jersey it's got a nice stretch to it um, it's worked really nicely for the sleeves because it's got just the right amount of structure I think on there um, so it's got a lovely pleated detail in so within the pattern pack um, for the iris t-shirt you've got different options of the sleeve you've got a three quarter length arm you've also got the pleated detail uh, short sleeve that I did or you've got the option of doing a plain uh, t-shirt type sleeve as well but I thought do you know what I've got plain t-shirts I want to do something that's a little bit different so I wanted to try the pleated arm um, and I wasn't disappointed because it is a really lovely little top um, the rest of the t-shirt is quite straightforward it's more of your kind of normal t-shirt design in terms of making up a t-shirt but um, I don't know how clearly you can see the pleated detailing on there um, but it is a really nice uh, little make um, on the forget me not website if you go to the actual pattern there's a little kind of video slideshow type thing on there which actually shows you how to fold the pattern piece how to fold the fabric to actually make uh, the pleated detailing which i found to be really useful because otherwise it's a bit of a head scratcher and you kind of think oh how's that going to work but actually looking at the little tutorial on the website i did find that really useful so i would recommend doing that if you are thinking about making this t-shirt for yourself um, I am going to have a go at doing the three quarter length arm version at some point, um, but um, I've not got around to that one quite yet. So this top is available in sizes 28 through to 48 and the model on the website is actually wearing the size 34. Now I actually made the size 34 for myself and I think that the sizing came up quite nicely. Now I think this top is actually designed for someone who's about five foot six, so shorter than myself. Um, I'm actually five foot ten, um, but I did actually find that um, I had got a bit of uh, an issue because I'd only got limited fabric. I'd only got one meter of fabric rather than anything longer than that. So I only had limited fabric to work with. Um, so I actually just cut out the pattern pieces as it was, and um, it worked out okay actually because I don't really mind t-shirts being a little bit on the shorter side because, like I said, I do tend to wear high waisted things so the t shirts can tuck in. Um, so I'm really pleased with the way that this one worked out. Um, I kept the neckline as it was supposed to be. I will slot in some pictures also of me wearing this t shirt so you can see what it looks like on. Um, the neckline for me is a little bit on the high side. I think if I was to make it again, I might drop it down by an inch or so. Um, it's not really, really high, but for me, my personal preference is just to have something that's slightly lower. I just feel a little bit more comfortable in that. So I probably would drop the neckline down a little bit next time if I was to make it again. And I probably will because I'm, I'm really pleased with the overall fit of the top. Um, I think it's, it's just a really nice little top and it's just something a little bit different with those pleated sleeves. So I would definitely recommend um, having a go at making the iris tee if you've not um, had a go already. Um, yeah, so lovely pattern, really enjoyed making it and it's something that I think will be very wearable 
Now I can layer it up with a nice thick cardigan and then through into the kind of spring, summer, I'll be able to wear it just as it is. So really looking forward to getting loads of wear out of that one. Maker number three that I wanted to share with you today is actually the Asling blouse by Jennifer Lauren Patterns. So um, I don't know if you can see that one there. So there's two different options in the pattern pack. Uh, my pattern does look a little bit scrappy. So um, sorry about that. This is actually a free pattern that came in um, Simply Sewing Magazine here in the UK. Okay, but you can actually buy this from the Jennifer Lauren website and it was one that I had my eye on to be honest for quite a while um, but over the summer last summer I went to the crafty so-and-so sewing camp and they had a kind of um, free swaps table where people brought patterns in and you know you're able to take patterns away so this was actually a pattern that I got from the swaps table um, so thank you very much to whoever it was that donated this one um, I've really enjoyed making it so I decided to go for the version that Jennifer is actually wearing on the cover there with no collar um, there is a collared version in there as well which looks really cute but I didn't have a chance to make that one as yet but I just loved the square neckline here it's got some dark details around the bust area it's got a gathered cuff uh, which is finished with some elastic just on the inside there a slightly gathered to the top of the shoulder and it finishes just around the lower uh, hip the mid sort of hip area so it's a lovely top quite straightforward to make but looks super smart so um i decided to make mine in this gorgeous shiny fabric which i got in the so Haley jane um december subscription box that i get so um it's not very often that i get a fabric and i'm like yeah gotta work with that straight away but this was one of those and i think i wasn't doing anything fancy over christmas and new year i was actually just staying in not really seeing too many people we had quite a quiet sort of family time um which is really nice to be honest because you know when you're really really busy all year long it's actually quite nice just to have a little bit of quiet time um, around christmas time watch some tv eat some lovely food that kind of thing um so that's what we decided to do um so i didn't really have anywhere to wear this top too but of course i will be able to wear it whenever later in the year so here it is um again i will put in um some pictures or a video or something of me wearing this so as you can see it's finished with a facing around the neckline. It's got that gorgeous um, square neckline detailing on there. You can see the darts there. Um, and you've got a slight gather, as I said, to the top of the shoulder. And then it's finished with just a bit of elastic around the bottom sleeve area. Um, I can't remember what this fabric's called exactly, um, but it's got a lovely movement to it. Did fray a little bit when I was working with it. So I did have to overlock this. I do tend to overlock most things, to be honest, anyway. Um, but this was a must really because otherwise it was going to fray quite a lot. Um, I have found that the fabric does actually crease up quite a lot. You can see it's a little bit creased on the front there even though it's actually been ironed. Um, I was kind of umming and ahhing whether, whether I should actually do a top stitch around the neckline to keep that facing in place but because I didn't want to snag the fabric or anything like that I decided just to add in a few hand stitches to hold down um, the facing instead which I think has worked out quite nicely so um, I'm really looking forward to having an opportunity to actually wear this one out soon. Um, me and my husband are actually going to watch a concert, um, see one of our favourite bands in a, a few weeks time towards the end of the month so um, maybe I'll be able to wear it to that but we'll wait and see. We were supposed to be going to the same concert Oh, a few months ago but because of Covid it got cancelled so fingers crossed it actually happens this time because I'm really looking forward to it um, but if you are interested in making the Asling black blouse it's actually available in UK sizes 6 through to 24 um, and as I said there's the two different details on there I think it would be really easy also to shorten the sleeve if you wanted to um, and give it a little bit of a different look but I think this could work well in quite a lot of different woven fabrics I think it could look really nice for summer if you were to shorten the sleeves perhaps in uh, a cotton lawn fabric or um, something a little bit lighter maybe a linen something like that um, but yeah I really really like this and I'm sure I shall give it a go another time but I'm super pleased with my kind of shiny party top and as I said I'm looking forward to wearing that one at some point soon. Maker number four that I wanted to share with you today is something that I've made from some remnants. So I absolutely love picking up remnants of fabric from you know kind of rummage bins and things like that. So I went along to Sew Brom back in October um, in 2021 uh, with some lovely sewing friends and we visited one of my favourite sewing shops in Birmingham which is Guthrie and Garney 
And when we were there, um, I had a look in the rummage bin and in kind of the sale area and came away with a few different remnants of fabric. So I'm pleased to say that after some careful pattern placement, um, I've actually come up with a lovely cardigan. Well, I think it's lovely. My husband described it as quirky and said that perhaps I look like I should be in high school musical or something like that. But I don't see what the problem with that is. I like High School Musical and I also think that my cardigan is really, really nice. Um, so here it is. So I have made the Bertha cardigan, uh, which is from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And I love that book. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I've made quite a few things from the Make It Simple book. I'm a big fan of that book. Um, and yeah, this cardigan is also another one that I really like. So I've used a range of different sweatshirt fabrics here. So as you can see, I've got the grey for the cuffs there. I've got this beautiful teal um, cosy colours fabric. You can see it's got a little fleck in there of different colours. Um, I've used the grey for the kind of um, neckline facing type bit. Um, and then we've got a beautiful um, shiny um, sweatshirt fabric that I've used for the main body of the fabric, uh, of the main body of the t-shirt top not t-shirt main body of the cardigan should i say um so i'm really really pleased with this actually i'll just slip it on so you can actually see what it looks like on so it doesn't really go with this top obviously <laughs> um but if i just stand up you'll be able to see it a little bit better so you can see that it comes down to just below my waist um and i've made this in the size three and um, I think it's quite a good fit actually. It's not supposed to close on the front, but it would do like if you wanted it to. Um, but I just really like how the different fabrics have worked quite nicely together. Um, I just find that there's something fun and quite uh, creative using different colored fabrics, um, placing the different fabrics together, and also, um, you know, just maybe thinking outside the box in terms of the pattern placement. So um, this um, project is designed to be made for a knit fabric. So something with a little bit of stability like a sweatshirt, fabric, maybe a Ponte Roma, that sort of thing. Um, these were all sweatshirt fabrics that I've used here, um, which were all a similar weight as well. Um, but I do think that they've worked quite nicely. So um, do let me know what you think of my cardigan. Um, as I said, my husband's not a big fan, uh, but I, I quite like it. Um, I've worn it out for coffee a couple of times. And I felt quite comfortable and quite nice when I've worn it. Um, but do let me know what you think of it. And also, if you've made the Bertha cardigan before, um, if you made any sort of different uh, designs of it. Did you use some different fabrics? And um, do let me know because I am interested in making another one again in the future. Like, this is actually the third time that I've had a go at making the Bertha cardigan. Um, I've made my other ones in a Ponty fabric. I made one in a True Knit fabric. And then I've got this one, which is obviously in the sweatshirt fabric. So all of them have worked really well. I think the True Knit fabric was perhaps a little bit on the chunky side, a little bit thick, um, but it still worked okay. And I have worn that one quite a lot as well. The next thing that I want to share with you today is actually a selection of pyjamas so I've made these for myself and also for my little boy William so this is actually the Perry family pyjamas and that is you can see them there um, there's different versions for grown-ups and also for children as well so um, I really like this pattern because you've got quite a lot of options I suppose to sort of make it for grown-ups men women or children um, so yeah it's a really really nice one um, I really like that for children, um, there's quite a big sizing um, span. So you, it starts at age one and it goes all the way through to age 11. So you, you can keep going back to the pattern and keep retracing it as the children grow, which I think is perfect. Um, yeah, and I, I just really like um, how you've got that option there. And so I've actually made my version um, for William in age one. Um, the trousers do come up slightly long and William does have quite long legs for his age as well. Um, but I like that the trousers are designed that they've actually got a gusset in the back area, uh, which means that there's plenty of room for a nappy and it's not too tight in that area, which means that he can still move around really freely. Um, and, you know, he's crawling and, you know, pulling himself up on the furniture and things. And there's no, you know, the, the, the fabric's not too stiff or um, the fabric or the design is, is not too bulky for any of that. So, um, but I really like um, the way that these are put together. They finish with a little cuff on the bottom. I used a ribbing for the bottom. Um, I used this lovely fox fabric, which is kind of a winter th fox design, uh, which I was given from Minerva as part of their brand ambassador scheme. So that's the bottoms. This is the little top that I made for William. So I made these pretty much all on my overlocker. Uh, which worked out quite nicely. So that's the version for William. I will put in some pictures of us both wearing these pyjamas as well. 
if you'd like to um, have a look at those. Um, I've worn my pyjamas quite a lot since I made them. They've been through the washing machine a few times and I'm really pleased with this fabric because it's a, a cotton jersey fabric. It's quite a nice weight. It feels lovely against the skin. Um, and also it's washed really well and it's super comfy to wear for sleeping and also just kind of being around the house as well. Um, so my version is exactly the same as William's. Um, I'd say that the top is very similar actually to um, the Linden sweatshirt apart from it's got it's not got the raglan sleeves like that one has but i think the fit and the way that it feels on my body is very similar to um the linden sweatshirt um so the the sweatshirts on both uh, the tops on both the children's version and also the women's version aren't supposed to have a waistband a hem band on the top um, but i decided to just add one on because i felt like it gave it a bit more of a professional finish and i quite like the look of that um so that's what i decided to do i bought the green ribbing just from a local shop that are not actually online uh, near where i live uh, but i think that that's worked out really nicely um and these are the trousers that i made for myself so um yeah you probably can't see them very well there but um, yeah, they're just lovely. Uh, the thing that I like about these pyjamas is I've made quite a few sets of pyjamas for myself before, not really like the fit. And I don't know, I've always been a little bit disappointed because sometimes um, pyjamas can be quite fabric hungry and it can be quite expensive sort of buying all of the fabric to make some pyjamas. And then, you know, if you're a little bit disappointed in the end, then you know, it seems like a bit of a, a pointless process for me personally. So I'm really pleased with the way that these have worked out and that I really do like the fit of them. Um, I made the straightforward size 12 for myself with no changes apart from adding on the, uh, the hem band to the jumper. So um, I'm definitely going to make some of those pyjamas again. Um, I might just make the bottoms next time um, and just wear a top that I've already got. Not sure yet, depends how much fabric I've got um, to play with I suppose. But um, I used just under four metres of fabric to make both the children's pyjamas and also the, the pyjamas for myself. So, yes, quite a lot of fabric, really. Uh, but I was really fortunate that I was given the fabric this time from Minerva. And as I said, I'm really pleased with the quality of the fabric. And I think it's worked perfectly for the pyjamas. The next thing that I wanted to share with you today is actually something that I made as a gift for a friend of mine. So um, I made a table runner out of some fat quarters. So the fat quarters um, have got a Christmas theme and they came out of the So Hayley Jane box that I got in December. So pretty much I've used most things already that I got in that box, uh, which is really good. I also ate the chocolates that came in it like pretty much straight away as soon as I opened the box, to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, I can't show you the table runner because it's already been given as a gift, but I will add in some pictures so that you can see what it actually looked like. But I actually recorded a, a video tutorial last year, if you're interested. If you look on the Christmas playlist on my um, YouTube video, um, I will link it down below as well in the description. Um, if you want to make a table runner for yourself, it's a super, super easy project to do. You can make one in less than an hour. They can be made at any time of the year, I think, but they are the perfect gift, I think, really, for Christmas and, um, you know, even a gift for New Year. You know, if people are having a New Year party, you want something a little bit fancy in the centre of your dining table or even on your sideboard or something like that. I think a table runner works really, really nicely. Um, so my friend was really pleased with the table runner that I gave uh, to her. Um, she's a friend of mine that... Um, I've not known for that long, but um, we we met actually at the local park. We've both got children around the same age and she really appreciates a handmade gift. And um, when it was William's birthday, she made me a lovely um, handmade embroidery um, thing that she'd done for William, which was really, really sweet of her. So I wanted to make sure that I made her a lovely handmade gift for Christmas. And she absolutely loved the table runner and said that she was going to go straight home and put it on her table. So um, that meant a lot. And um, hopefully she's, uh, she's done that and um, she's still enjoying it now. So the final thing that I want to share with you today is actually another gift that I made for a friend. And this is the Sew Over It toiletries bag or makeup bag. Um, so again, this was actually a gift. So it's already been given to my friend for Christmas. Um, but I will put in some pictures of what it looked like. So um, I'm a big fan of the Sew Over It toiletries bag. Obviously, there's lots of different toiletries, kind of makeup bags around. But I really like that one because there's loads of room in it. It's got um, a lovely square bottom design on it, uh, which means you can cram quite a lot of things into it. Um, it's finished with a zip on the top. Um, you can either add a lining or not. 
not. So I decided to make my version out of a beautiful denim fabric that I've got. And then I actually added on a green lining on the inside, which has got a kind of Kath Kitson type feel to it. Um, and I used a lovely uh, pink zip on the top, which has got some metal teeth. So overall, I was really, really pleased with the, with the makeup bag. And my friend said she was gonna put some uh, knitting um, bits and pieces inside it. So uh, I'm really pleased with that. I know that she really liked it. And again, it's one of the, kind of go-to patterns for me for making gifts for people. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely one that I've enjoyed making for myself. So hopefully, you know, other people that I've made it for um, will enjoy using it as well. And I'm sure that they will do. So I definitely recommend having a go at the toiletries pattern if you've not tried it already. Well, that's everything that I've got to share with you today and what I've been making in December. So I hope you've enjoyed watching today. If you have, I would love it if you could press that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you to everyone who does join me each week and also who has subscribed already and you know you keep pressing that like button so I really do appreciate that by pressing the like button and leaving me comments below I love to hear from you in the comments by the way so do you leave me any questions you've got down there um, and any feedback kind of things that I've made um, it just encourages YouTube to share my video with other people that do enjoy sewing and crafting so um, I do appreciate that if you could um, you know, hit that like button, etc. Um, that's really good. So I will be back on my channel soon. Uh, we've got lots of other things to share with you. Um, I've got my capsule wardrobe that I'm hoping to share with you soon uh, that I've been working on for winter. I've still got a couple of bits and pieces to make for that. And then I'll be able to show you my full collection. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And I'll also be sharing my uh, Make 9 for 2022 with you shortly as well. Um, but thank you for joining me today. Um, I really enjoy having you here. So thanks for being with me and I'll see you again soon. Bye.